Now let's move on to the new iPhone devices that Apple released. They did release two new iPhones, and as expected, they are the S device iPhones. And if you look at Apple's track, entire track record, track record, you'll basically know that they do release S iPhones, basically. And this, to me, is what I always call the filler year, where Apple just basically use their brand and everything to sort of hype up a new release of an iPhone, and then they boost their sales for this year. The actual upgrade for the iPhone, where they try harder, will be on the iPhone 7 next year. So. That gives you an idea as to what the new features are with this. And the two new iPhones are called the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. And it does come in a new rose gold color, which looks very pinkish, uh, which is very strange. So when you just get down to it, guys, there is only just three basic features that uh, this iPhone has. Well, should I say three new features, not basic, but three new features. One is the speed. It's now got an A9 processor. Faster processors are a given. You're not going to get, that's nothing uh, new. Uh, second thing is the 4K video recording. Now, yes, it does have a 12 megapixel camera, which is great Apple upgraded to. That is really good. Uh, but 4K, well, the reason I actually highlighted that is that Apple actually always take about two, three years. They always wait for the technology to sort of like uh, develop some. Then they integrate it into their smartphones and devices about two, three years down the line. But here, they've actually done, 4K just came on, but came like about a year ago. On, in smartphones, and Apple just started to release it about one year later, which is great. They've actually caught up with the times in terms of video recording right here, which is really good. The camera, as you expect, Apple's cameras are good, so uh, I, I know there is going to be a camera that's going to beat it down the line, because that seems to be the pattern I'm noticing. Apple have a great camera, but some other smartphone manufacturer comes and develops a better camera later on down the line. But most likely this will actually conquer most of them. Uh, at first, I don't know how it can conquer the Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge, but it will most likely beat most of them. And also, you could take 8 megapixel still photos with the 4K, well, whilst you're recording 4K video at the same time, which is also very good. Now, a problem here is that Apple, in, with last year's iPhone 6 Plus, they gave it optical image stabilization, and the iPhone 6 had to deal with digital image stabilization, which is nowhere near as good. Uh, Apple, again, did the same thing with the iPhone 6 this year. The Only the 6S Plus has optical image stabilization, but the 6S does not. You're still dealing with the same uh, digital uh, opt uh, image stabilization. Now, that I really am annoyed with that Apple did not do that. I mean, come on, give the iPhone 6 some sort of like upgrade in that regard. Uh, and also, another thing that they didn't do was upgrade the screens in any way. I don't want them to upgrade the screen size, but they should have at least upgraded the screen resolution of the iPhone 6S to 1080p. And they should have boosted the iPhone 6 Plus from 1080p to 4K. Or, sorry, not 4K, 2K. So that way, you can at least w watch back your 4K recorded footage on a 2K display, especially one as big as the iPhone 6, uh, 6 Plus. So I'm disappointed they did not do that, but most likely that will come next year. But again, that tells you that this is not a very good upgrade of that. You know, things like this, you're expecting, oh, they'll come next year. Then wait next year and get that one. The iPhone 6 that you got right now and 6 Plus you got right now will uh, serve you well for the next year. So uh, that's that. And they've also got Force Touch, which is actually a new feature. Now, Force Touch is basically, uh, well, they call it here 3D Touch, but I'm going to call it Force Touch throughout this video, basically. Now, what you're basically able to do with the Force Touch feature is that if you tap and hold on an icon, instead of allowing, allowing the application's icons to all jiggle around the screen, if you apply more pressure, you'll actually be able to have a little pop-up box appear on, above the application. So, so it'll allow you, for example, with the email application, if you do the, the Force Touch on it, it will allow you to actually compose an email or go into a certain inbox and things like that without you having to actually go into it and then press the Compose button. So it basically saves you a few taps and presses. And seeing as the iPhone is much faster now, you know, it's kind of strange because it can actually get you there faster anyway. But that's a little feature they did. It is a nice little addition, but to tell you the truth, it's not one of those features that I feel like, oh, I must have that. You know, it's one of those features I must have. It's not. Uh, but that being said, that's one of the features there. And that's your lot, basically, guys. That's your three main features you're getting. It's faster, has a better camera, and has force touch. Those are your three new features, by the, by the way, right there. So, yeah, uh, it's quite disappointing, really, because, uh, you know, you want more features when Apple release, release a new iPhone. The rest of the features are going to be in iOS 9, but everyone else will have those features. You know, everyone else who has a 6 and a 6 Plus. Uh, but that being said, I, di I, I didn't expect any more from them anyway, to tell you the truth. The S devices, as I say, are basically the year of Apple to do filler. Now, the thing is, I had no expectations going in. Usually, I set my expe expectations very low, but I have none when it comes to this event, event or even the next Apple events, because Apple always do end up disappointing me these last few years. They were great up until the iPhone 4, but when the 4S came and onwards, it's just been disappointing. Now, I'm going to discuss one big problem here with the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus that no one on YouTube, at least right now, 
or on the internet at all has discussed and that is the 16 gigabyte capacity. What the hell is a 16 gigabyte capacity doing on a phone that supports 4K recording? Because guys, once it's all said and done with a 16 gigabyte capacity, iOS will take about a good six, seven gigabytes, then you'll be only be left about eight or nine. And then what's gonna happen when you install your basic apps that you really use on a daily basis, then you install a few games that you like to play as well when you're on the train or whatever. And then you take some photos, basic photos. What's gonna happen then with the storage that's left over? You don't wanna run out of storage and have your phone constantly tell you you're running out of storage. You're going to have to record some 4K video at some point. That's one of the things you're going to get with this iPhone. So you're going to want to take advantage of it, especially with the price point you're paying. You're not going to be able to take advantage of it because thing is 4K video takes up such a great amount of space that my 64 gigabyte Nexus 6 uh, runs out of, well, I haven't never had it run out of storage on me, but basically when you add on everything else I've got on this phone, it runs out of storage basically. So uh, with a 16 gigabyte, it's not going to stand a chance. If a 64 gigabyte version can sort of run out, 16 gigabytes is not going to stand a chance at all. And Apple should have started with a 32 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte version. I mean, why didn't they? Apple fanboys, I've sort of mentioned this with on the internet, basically just say, well, then get a higher gigabyte capacity if you want to record, record 4K video. You shouldn't have to. You should be able to pay a base version price point. And Apple are still living in the past with a 16 gigabyte because the 16 gigabyte, it costs you the exact same as a 16 gigabyte phone would cost you about four or five years ago. That is not on. That is Apple basically ripping you off. I'm just going to say it. It's downright scandalous, basically. So that is just terrible. And they should have at least some decency for their customers that have been with them for all these years. Uh, Samsung, H uh, H Samsung, HTC, uh, even uh, Motorola and Google, where I got this Nexus 6 from, they start off with 32 gigabyte versions. And um, in, the, in the Nexus 6's case in particular, it cost about £500 to get a Nexus 6 with 32 gigabytes. And if you want to get the 64 gigabyte version, you just pay £50 more. That's basically the cheap upgrade price it is to upgrade from a capacity to a capacity. But Apple are going to charge you to upgrade from a 16 gigabyte capacity to a 64 gigabyte, about £200 more if you're buying it outright. Apple, if you're going to make a smartphone that has 4K video capabilities, then do not have a very old 16 gigabyte capacity. That's expensive. That is a downright scandalous. And that is, it shows how much you care for your customers. But then again, Phil Schiller called uh, all previous Apple customers laggards in one of his events about two years ago. Shows how much he cares about any of you. Uh, and also, well, what was it that uh, Tim Cook said? All Android users should get a life. Now, he basically said it slightly differently than that, but that's basically how it came out. He literally used those words, Android users should get a life. I'm an Android user, yet I've paid about 1,500 quid on your MacBook Pro over there. So you're telling me to get a life? Seriously, Apple are very, very blatant and they're very, very rude in these respects. That's why I never watch these events because basically they just cuss, cuss you and then you see all those Apple fanboys, or she I sheep as I call them, all lined up sitting down just laughing at their jokes. Uh, not funny and, uh, well, if you're that loyal to Apple, go ahead, be loyal to them. Be, once they even threw it in your face that they don't give a damn, basically they actually called one of their laptops the Lombard. Do you actually know what the business translation for Lombard is? Lots of money, but are really dumb. There you go. That's what Apple basically think of you. And they actually put that title right in front of your faces and none of you even realized it. Anyway, that's enough of my little bashing of Apple. Overall, iPad Pro, decent product, way too high price point, and I don't see it being useful or productive enough to, uh, productive enough to warrant that cost. iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, they were the typical S devices you would expect. If you've got an iPhone 6, do not upgrade to these at all. Wait for the iPhone 7 next year. But if you've got any previous version of the iPhone, the iPhone 5S or before, you can upgrade to the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus and you should be satisfied. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching and for sticking throughout this entire video. Uh, please comment below with your thoughts down there. Apple fanboys, rage out, go ahead below. There's no such thing as bad publicity really in my opinion. So uh, there you go. So uh, take that my opinion for what it's worth and I uh, will catch all of you in the next video. Take care.